Hello and welcome to another lecture uh, in the course of the ideological study of the scarlet literature. And today we are going to talk about uh, the concept and the theory of hegemony and its definitions. Um, of course, hegemony has been defined differently by various uh, theoreticians and by various schools of thoughts and politics. Uh, yet, I'm going to uh, focus on, on the Marxist theory of this uh, theory and the Marxist definitions because uh, it has become matured uh, in Marxism by, by Gramsci, who defined and gave uh, somehow complete understanding of this term and this theory. <coughs> So, uh, let's go directly to the definitions of this theory, of this concept. Hegemony is the political, economic, or military predominance or control of one state over others. So, it is simply the dominance. It is the control of one state. Uh, it is the domination of, of the authorities. It is the domination of the government over other states in the society for example it dominates uh, the military uh, for example one party one ideology dominates the military the economic uh, the politics of that country so this is called hegemony um, the next point the Marxist theory of cultural hegemony associated with particularly with Antonio Gramsci is the idea that the ruling class can manipulate the value system of a society so that their view becomes the world view. Uh, this is really interesting because um, hegemony is the manipulation of the government over the minds of the society, over the fields of the society in order to support their legitimacy, in order to support their authority and their leadership of the society. So. Uh, Hegemony, according to Gramsci, means the domination of all the fields of society only to support the legitimacy of the authority and the government in order to rule and in order to stay at the top of the hierarchy of authority in, in, in a country. Uh, the third point here is that hegemony also means the ways in which a governing power wins consent to its rule from those it subjugates. In contrast to authority and rule, cultural hegemony is hegemonic only if those affected by it also consent to and struggle over its common sense. Uh, this is a very important distinction and contrast between a hegemonic state or country with the uh, authoritar authoritarian rule and government. Uh, hegemony tends to convince its, its subjects, to convince its people that I am the good one and I am the best and the most proper person or government or ideology that can rule you. So you should accept my presence in the government. Uh, this is called hegemony according to this definition. But by the way, it was explained by Terry Eagleton, this last third point. Uh, so, uh, you should, in order to have a successful hegemony, you should, you know, uh, convince your people that you are the right person in the right position. Uh, otherwise, it will be an authoritarian rule, authoritarian government. For example, uh, let's let's take some real examples. Uh, in in the previous Soviet Union in Russia, up to uh, 18, 1989, uh, those governments, by for example Stalin, by uh, other leaders, they were authoritarian authoritarian rules because they did not seek the consent. They did not seek to convince their uh, their subjects their people they ruled by force and by oppression by suppression they kill people that's why they are not uh, they are not just some democracies they are authoritarian rules 
On the other hand, we have hegemony. Hegemony needs to convince its people, to convince its subjects. Today, in almost all governments, uh, even in those uh, multicultural democratic countries in Europe and even in America, they are hegemonic. They tend to convince the people of their legitimacy of their government. Uh, in fact, according to some uh, theorists, they believe that we have three types of hegemony. Number one, cultural hegemony. Number two, political hegemony. And number three, religious hegemony. Let's take each one uh, separately and independently and let's see what do they mean. Cultural hegemony. It is a process through which the ruling power dominate the cultural issues of the society to support their authority. So here the government tends to dominate the cultural issues, the cultural affairs of, of a society in order to support the legitimacy of the government. Uh, for example, we see in like, like in our governments, in Middle Eastern governments, uh, for example, Iraq, our politicians they tend to propose themselves and present themselves as they are the supporters, they are the guardians of the society, of, of the culture, of the Iraqi culture, that they are the continuation of those uh, Ashurian and Sumerian civilizations. They are the guardians and the supporters and the protectors of the Iraqi culture. Uh, they only do that to convince people that they are the best people in power. We need them. Uh, this is called cultural hegemony when they dominate our culture and they try to uh, to, to link the, the survival of the culture with their presence. And number two, we have political hegemony. It is the control of the political arena by one ideology to support its rule. <clears throat> Here, this is the most uh, obvious one in, in today's world. Here, one ideology, for example, one party, uh, this party tends to dominate the political arena, the political field, everything in politics of a country, in order to uh, support its authority and to, to lead and to maintain the ultimate power of a country. Uh, and this is, this is obvious in many countries in today's world, for example. Uh, for example, in the United States of America, we see that sometimes the Democrats, they try to dominate and have that political hegemony in the, in the United States. And in other times, we see the uh, Republicans, they tend to dominate the political arena like today's Trump. Uh, so this is called political hegemony in order to, to uh, realize their ideological aims and goals. And number three, we have religious hegemony. <clears throat> it is the control of the religious thoughts of people by the authorities to support the legitimacy of the rule. And this is, uh, this is so clear in some countries. For, for example, we have, in, uh, we have Saudi Arabia, we have uh, the Islamic Republic of Iran, we have, for example, uh, Jordan, we have Syria, we, we have even, even uh, today, uh, the time of, of recording this lecture, uh, I watched some news that Trump was depending on, on the Bible in order to support his legitimacy. So this is called religious hegemony, when, when the leader tries to dominate the, the religious thoughts of people, and to convince them religiously that he is the proper person to protect their their religions and their uh, mosques and their churches and 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 God, even God. Uh, and this is the most obvious point in in this course's uh, novel, the Scarlet Letter, when we see that that uh, the government, the mayors and the monks, everybody is trying to be hegemonic. By, by dominating the religious ideas of people, by, tr tr by trying convincing them that doing this is wrong and doing this is good. 
So uh, this is the most obvious manifestation of religious hegemony uh, in 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 this novel. So uh, thank you very much. We will continue in the coming lectures, and we will uh, in the next lecture we will try to read the novel and find out those ideological manipulation uh, in this novel, and we will try to find these theories in the novel and of course I, I will propose many other ideological theories uh, while reading the novel so thank you very much have a nice time bye bye